So today we're going to be looking at how to use the CoinMarketCap API in Python to retrieve the most recent quotes for a specific cryptocurrency fiat currency pet. So I'm just going to use Bitcoin USD. Obviously, you can adapt this to use whatever you want. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to sign up for the CoinMarketCap API. So just go to pro.coinmarketcap.com and then you can create an account and log in. So I'm just going to make an account here and then we can go ahead and continue. I'm not going to use this account after I've created it here. So I'm just going to make a random account. There we go. Let's get our verification code. Right. So here we have our login. So we've got everything we need. Let's now get to business and load up a Python file. So I'm just going to do tutorial.py. And then the first thing we're going to want to do is to get our URL endpoint for the API. Now, if that sounded scary, don't worry about it too much. Just head on over to the documentation for the CoinMarketCap API. And then on the left here, there'll be all sorts of strange things and it might seem a bit overwhelming, but all you need to do is head on over to cryptocurrency. And then this will give you all of the crypto endpoints. So essentially all of the different pieces of data you can request about cryptocurrency or here fiat or blockchain or whatever sort of statistics they have. So I'm going to go to crypto and then we can go to quotes latest here. So this just gives you essentially the most recent price. It also gives you this other stuff as well. So it'll give you say the volume in the 24 hours, the percentage change in price over a certain amount of time. Everything in this box on the right is what it will give you. And so let's go ahead and grab this URL here. So quotes latest, we go ahead and grab this URL. And then let's just save that as a variable. So URL is equal to this. Okay, so we've got our URL endpoint where we're going to be retrieving the latest quotes from the API. We then need to tell the API like what cryptocurrency we actually want. And so we'll do that in the parameters variable. So this is going to be a dictionary and it's going to be over multiple lines. And the first thing we want is to set the name. So what, what name of cryptocurrency do we want? So I'm going to use slug and then Bitcoin. And so wh where does this come from? Why am I using slug here? Well, it just comes from here. So we're in quotes latest. And then you go down to parameters and you see that it wants either a ID, a slug or a symbol. So it says ID, one or more comma separated values. Alternatively, this, alternatively, this. So you have to pass at least one of these in. So the ID, slug or symbol. I don't know the IDs of different cryptocurrencies off the top of my head. Although this is perhaps a more reliable way of doing things because you can retrieve the ID straight from the API and that kind of thing. I'm just using the slug here because it's the easiest. Alternatively, you could use symbol and just use BTC or something. It doesn't really matter that much. I wouldn't stress too much about it. The next parameter that we need to pass into this is the convert string. And in our case, it's just going to be USD. That's what we want the price of Bitcoin to be in. So I'm going to say convert USD. And then that's it. That's actually all we need to provide. These last three parameters here are optional. So you can, you can read about exactly what they do. So you can here, you can pass in different strings and it will give you more or less data depending on what you pass in. But since we're only after the price, we don't actually need to change this from the default. It's the same with this. We don't need to change this from the default. Okay, so how do we actually go about making this request? 
Well, we're going to need to import the request libraries from requests. There's, there's a module in Python called requests. It comes shipped with Python itself. So you, don't, you shouldn't need to install anything or pip install anything. It should just work. So from requests, import request and session. We're also going to import JSON since that is the format that we're going to retrieve from the API when it sends us its response. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new session. So you can think of a session like a browsing session on just your favorite browser of choice. And so it will save things like cookies and headers and just information that doesn't need to be repeatedly passed in because it's always going to be the same. And so speaking of information that's always going to be the same, we actually need to somehow give the API our API key so that it knows it's us and that it essentially functions as a password, which allows us entry and to get our data back. So we're going to create a headers variable and it's going to be another dictionary. And so the first parameter that we're going to pass in here is the accept key. Now, this is pretty common if you've used any other API. Basically, what this is doing is it's letting us select which return format we would like. So it's just going to be application, if I can spell, slash JSON. So as you might expect, this is just telling the CoinMarketCap API that we want a JSON format in response. I believe XML is supported and probably something like YAML if you're really into it, but I'm just gonna use JSON. It's what I would recommend. It's the easiest thing to do. We then need to pass in the API key. So the key for that is XCMC Pro API key. Okay. And now we need to actually go grab that. So if you go pull up in your tab where you're logged into CoinMarketCap, you can go and paste that in. Don't give your key away to anyone else. It functions essentially as a password. And so especially if you're using a paid plan, you don't want anyone else to get hold of this key because then they can send requests on your behalf and that will get billed to your plan. Obviously this is a throwaway account. So there's, no danger in me showing you all on YouTube. Okay, so let's add these headers to our session. So we'll do session dot headers dot update headers. So every single request we do is now going to use these headers and therefore we'll be able to have access to the API and we'll get a JSON response. Okay, so let's actually get our response. So we'll do response is equal to session dot get. We'll pass in our URL and then our parameters. So params equals parameters. All right. And then we want to print response dot text. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so we get essentially a JSON file here. So, but it's all bundled up. There's no spaces or nice formatting. So let's go ahead and actually make sure it's in JSON format. So we'll do json.loads. This just makes sure it's not in like a, a string or something and make sure we're actually dealing with a JSON file. Okay, so it looks pretty much the same. Let's use pretty print. So this is again an inbuilt Python library, I believe. So you can use pprint like that. And then instead of using the regular Python print function down here, we can use pprint. So it's pprint dot pprint. And then that should display things in a much nicer format. So now we can easily see 
how to get the price value, whereas it was very difficult when it was all nested like that. So I'll show you how this works, like how we access the different regions here. And so we see that the price is here. So the price is here. Well, so the price is inside this block of which the key is USD. And then the key for this block is quote. And then the key for this block is one. And then the key for this block is data. So it's all these nested dictionaries essentially inside each other. That's how JSON is formatted in Python. And so this first key is the one that we need to pass in first. So you're from the outside in. And so let's just try that. So we'll do here, we'll do date. And that should get us one level deeper. Have I put the wrong key in there? Data, yeah, data. Okay, so we're, you can see we're in one level deeper now. So now one is this highest level key and there's nothing else on that level. So let's speed things up a little bit. So we'll go one quote USD. So one quote USD. So we need to go three levels deeper. Let's go down here and we'll go one quote USD. Okay, so that this is how you just, you just pass them in one after the other in square brackets going from outside in. So this is getting down to the actual data that we were looking to retrieve. All we need to do now is pass in price and I believe that should get us the data coming in straight away. So there we go, that is actually retrieving the price there for Bitcoin. Let's, if we go ahead and look back on the documentation, you can see that it caches every 60 seconds. And so it's not actually updating this value if I just keep spamming it. It maintains the same value for a period of 60 seconds. So you're not gonna get perfect real time data that might be available on some of the higher plans, but us plebs on a basic plan don't get that. And so I hope you found this useful and you can integrate this into your projects, whether that's building some kind of portfolio app or something more real time or an algo bot or, you know, something interesting.